Now I'm happy to launch us into the final segment of this course, at least conceptually. This is the section where we talk about the fundamental forces between objects. Here this fundamental force is the electric force, which it turns out underlies a whole lot of phenomena in our daily lives that we don't necessarily realize are related to electricity. And part of the reason for that is that the electric force paradoxically is so strong we don't know it's there. This is a rather large unit. I'm going to step you through our outline of the unit as a whole. We're not going to finish all of this in today's lecture. So first of all, today's lecture we'll talk about stationary charges and how they interact. Then about moving charges, several uh, consequences of moving charges, and specifically creating circuits, and then another consequence of moving charges, which is magnetism. Then we learn how magnetism affects moving charges. So from today's lesson, what we're going to do is understand the fundamental formula that governs the electric interaction. And that formula is known as Coulomb's law. Then we'll use a conceptual visualization of how this electric force works, known as electric field. And conceptualizing fields turns out to be useful in other areas of physics as well. Related to field, we can learn about electric potential. Electric charge, we've looked at a little bit in lab. Our last lab um, involved things like rubbing balloons with rabbit fur and seeing that they stuck to things. Today we'll try to understand why that works. But before we do so, one piece of vocabulary that I want to introduce you to is the concept of conductors and insulators. In a conductor, electric charges move freely. In an insulator, electric charges don't move. Then we have this idea of electric charge. It turns out that electric charge comes in two types. We call them positive and negative, and mathematically they do behave as if they're positive and negative. They appear to be opposites of each other. A positive charge can cancel out a negative charge and make it seem that there is no charge at all. So a positive and negative add up to zero with electricity just as they do mathematically. This, in fact, was the first actual observable quantity found in science that confirmed that negative numbers are a real thing. Is a property of matter, charge is conserved. We can't create more negative charge or more positive charge without creating the opposite. So anytime a charged particle is created, a particle with the opposite charge also has to be created. But charge itself cannot be created or destroyed. So charges can be separated from each other. Positive and negative charges can be pulled apart so that we see the charges that when they're together, we don't see. And charges can transfer from one object to another. But again, charge is conserved. Let's look at the force between charged objects. Again, always between objects. Newton's third law applies to the electric force just as it does with any other force and any force exerted on one object has to be exerted by another object, and the force is actually an interaction between the objects. Here's the formula known as Coulomb's Law. So this tells us the force F between two objects, 1 and 2. Q1 and Q2 are the electric charges of objects 1 and 2, the interacting objects. K is a proportionality constant. D is the distance between objects 1 and 2. So this formula specifically works for point masses, where objects 1 and 2 are points, and Q1 and Q2 are their charges. This K is what it has to be, uh, in units at least, to make this work, that we have to get a force out of it, so there has to be Newtons in it, and we are getting it from uh, multiplying two charges together, so we have to have charge squared in the denominator, that's the coulombs, and then we have to have distance squared in the numerator, that's this meter squared. What is this C? We haven't seen that before. The C is the coulomb, that's the SI unit of electric charge. Just for a little context, the charge of a proton is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. We'll define where the coulomb comes from in due course, let's explore what this formula is telling us. The first thing which is not obvious that I have to tell you as a convention is that 
when the charges are opposite, Q1 and Q2 have opposite signs, then this force is negative, has a negative sign. When this force has a negative sign, that means that the objects are attracting. If Q1 and Q2 are the same sign, both negative or both positive, then the electric force is repulsive and the algebraic sign of this expression is positive. So a positive result from this formula means it's a repulsive force. A negative result means that it's an attractive force. And notice also this force is directly proportional to the charges of the objects and it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. That's what this d squared in the denominator is telling us. That's not too much of a surprise. We've seen already that the electric force decreases with distance. And it turns out that mathematically that decrease is with the square of the distance. There's good geometric reason for that. Quick check that we understand how this formula works. So imagine a electrically interacting system, the hydrogen atom, the electron that's zinging around the proton, which is the nucleus, if the electron and the proton are separated by some distance, there is a force between them. It's an attractive force because the proton and the electron have opposite charges. If the electron is to move twice as close to the proton, how does the force change? Well, if we look at the formula that we had in the previous slide, the numerator isn't changing. The K is a constant. Q1 and Q2 aren't changing in this system. The denominator is what's changing. D is becoming half what it is. So D squared, is the one half times one half, so that's one fourth what it is. One fourth in the denominator means four times the result, the fraction. So this means that the force must be increasing by a factor of four if the distance between the interacting objects decreases by a factor of two. So we understand that charged particles interact with each other. Particles with the same sign of charge repel. Objects with the opposite sign of charge attract. But what if you bring an electrically charged object next to a neutral object? We saw in lab that there is an attraction. According to Coulomb's law, that should not happen. If you have one charged object and another object with a charge of zero, well, anything times zero is still zero. So that's not going to give us any interaction at all. Yet we see that there is an attraction between electrically neutral objects and charged objects. Balloons stick to walls, balloons attract cans, balloons attract a stream of water. So let's understand how that works. This is called charge polarization. So first let's imagine that we have a bag. It has positive and negative charge in it, and they can move around inside the bag, but the bag is gonna contain them. And then we place this bag next to a very large positive charge. So what, kind of force exert, so what kind of force is there between the positive charges in the bag and the large positive charge? Are they attracted, repelled, or neither? I hope you said that the positive charges would be repelled by the nearby positive charge. How about the force between the negative charges in the bag and the external positive charge? Are they going to be attracted, repelled, or neither? I hope you said that the negative charges are going to be attracted by the external positive charge. So what happens to the positive charges in the bag? Are they going to accelerate toward the external charge, away from the external charge, or will they not accelerate? I hope you said that they would be accelerating away from the charge because they're repelled. How about the negative charges in the bag? Are they going to accelerate toward the external charge? away from the charge, or not at all. I hope you said that they will be accelerating toward the charge they're attracted. So this means we're going to have a polarization, a rearrangement of the charges in the bag. The positive charges are going to be pushed away from the external charge. The negative charges are going to be pulled toward the bag, to the extent that they're able to move, that is. So they're going to redistribute. So which is going to be a stronger force. The force of repulsion between the positive charge and the external positive charge and the positive charges within the bag, or the force of attraction between the external charge and the negative charges within the bag.
This one's a little tough, but remember the denominator in Coulomb's law, that the force depends on the distance. The closer the distance, the stronger the force, the farther the distance, the weaker the force. Here, we have the same charges separated, the same magnitude of positive and negative charges. However, the negative charges, the attracted charges are closer and the repelled charges are farther away. So the attraction is going to be stronger than the repulsion because the attracted charges are closer and the force decreases with distance. So between the bag overall and the large positive charge is going to be an attraction. What if the external charge were a negative charge instead of a positive charge? So now this would be attracting the positive charges and repelling the negative charges in the bag. Would the net result be the bag is attracted to the charge or that it's repelled by the charge or neither? I hope you understood that the bag would be attracted by a negative charge as well. What the negative charge would do is set up the opposite polarization in the bag. The positive charges would be near it, the negative charges would be away, and the end result is the same, that the bag is going to be attracted to the negative charge because the attracted objects are, the attracted charges in the bag are closer than the repelled charges.